everyone. The purpose of this video is to go over the POI paper with you. In reality, even if the um, event is not over, you definitely can write most of this paper at this point in the semester. So if you look, it tells you very specifically, these are the sections. I want to note that this is not APA format, the way these sections are listed, so just keep that in mind. The first one is an introduction to your paper. An introduction to your paper should be one to two paragraphs or half a page. An introduction to your paper should say something brilliant about planning, organizing, and implementing, and then introduce the headings to the paper. That's how you introduce a paper. So part one of this paper is the planning process in health education. And this matches exactly what you did in the needs assessment, but now we're gonna do it with planning. So the first thing you have to do is ask, what is the correct way to plan? You're gonna to have to find a model or a health expert and explain what they say is the correct way to plan. Um, it says one to two pages because if you choose an expert that has 10 steps versus an expert that has three steps, you're going to have different lengths of this part of the paper. Then our planning, you're going to briefly describe what you did to plan your program. You should mention the needs assessment, but not in great detail because you wrote a whole paper on that. But it, it, you would mention it briefly because it is part of the planning process. And you would then describe what else you did to plan this event. And the next item, this is a critique of your planning. And at this point, you should look at the first two sections, <clears throat> what is the correct way to plan and what did you actually do? <clears throat> and comparing those two things, you're then going to explain whether or not you did it correctly based on your expert that you chose and what you did. Part two is planning strategies. It asks you to list six to eight strategies that we used that were designed to make the planning process better. Um, Eight strategies not, is not better than six. Six great ones is just as good as eight. So you need six to eight strategies. And the key is we're looking at strategies that make planning more effective. And so there's, there's over 10 things in this class that were put into place to try to help the planning process be more effective. I give you one example. It's two to three pages. It might be less than two pages. But here's an example that you cannot use in your paper. It says, and I'm, you have it in narrative, and then you have it in chart. You may do this section in narrative or in chart, but do not do both. So for example, here is a chart. It said the posting of team notes within two days of a meeting was a strategy, and it was supposed to help us stay organized and make sure people were um, doing the responsibilities that were assigned. Did it work? The answer is no for this group, it did not work. And the reason why it didn't work is that three people of the five never read the minutes and kept calling Sasha and me for information that was posted. I do want you to put names in here because it helps me understand the dynamic of what's happening in your group. The application, this is how you fix it in the future. Instead of Sasha and I telling them the answer, we could have referred them back to the minutes and then that we could have also addressed this at a meeting. So I'm looking, do you know a strategy that we used? Do you know if it worked or not? Do you know why it worked or didn't work? And then can you apply this in the future settings so that you can make sure that mistake does not happen again? Again, this is an example. You may not use this strategy because it's given to you. Again, six to eight. <clears throat> Part three is implementation. It has two parts. The first one is a di brief description of the implementation from setup, what happened during the health event, and cleanup. This can be a bulleted list. It does not need to be narrative. Um, then describe how you address diverse learnings in one paragraph or in a list. Depending on whether you do a narrative or you do lists, it could be one to two pages. Most likely one page. Um, you may not be able to do this part now until after you're done, but the rest of the paper you could probably write right now. Part four is you're either going to address problems related to planning or you're gonna explain how everything was perfect. 
It's highly unlikely everything went perfectly. So you're going to identify a problem and you're going to, um, let's go through the list here. Let me highlight the items so you see what I'm talking about. Let's see. Three to five problems, same thing. More is not better. You're going to say that they occurred, why they occurred, whoops, why they occurred, and how you could fix them in the future. So if you say there's a problem, this is why the problem occurred, and this is how I can fix it in the future. If you say there were no problems, then you're going to explain why what could have been a problem and how you would repeat that there were no problems in the future. So just to give you an example, you could say, that one problem is that, and I'm going to use Health 315, one problem is that our grant group did not meet as it was supposed to meet. The reason this occurred was blah, 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 and the way I would prevent that from happening in the future is blah, 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 blah. Or you could say one of the things that worked well in my group for my grant group in Health 315 is that my grant group had excellent communication. The reason why this happened is and the way I could replicate that in the future is. Again, this can be in a chart or narrative, but not both. And depending on whether it's a chart or narrative, it helps determine how long it is. Most of you will be able to do this in one and a half pages, probably no more than two. And then the last section is a summary of the paper. So you should say something brilliant about planning, organizing, and implementing, and then summarize by restating the headings that you just did in the paper. So again, this is not a hard paper to write, but it is time consuming because it requires you to think. I wanna point out a couple things about the scoring rubric. I want you to consider the feedback you received on your needs assessment and how important it is that you read and understand the scoring rubric. The green areas are basic factual information. They're not any type of critical thinking. If you get all of the green areas perfectly correct, you will have a low C. The areas that are not white, are not green, those areas require some critical thinking. And so it's more difficult to get all the points there, okay? And so just think, take that in consideration. Another thing is to look at the points allotted for each section. Last time in the needs assessment paper, the biggest points was 15 points in the analysis section. And some of you had a five page paper and that section was a paragraph. If one third of the points are allotted to one section, that means about one third of your paper should be allotted to that section. So when you look at this, the planning strategies and the problems and analysis have the most points. They should probably be the longest parts of your paper. And then critique of planning is right below that. Implementation is the lowest, so it should be the smallest. Um, if you have questions, make sure you reach out and ask. And hopefully this uh, video helps you do better on this uh, assignment. Have a great day.